conferences on virtual reality. And, you know, on one level you have the gung-ho technocrats who just see this as the greatest form of entertainment ever. But it does raise certain fairly profound questions. I mean, if you can put on a glove and some iPhones and go into a synthetic world, let's say a lavishly furnished mansion on a hill, but in that mansion a painting hangs over the fireplace and by pointing your finger at the painting you go through it and break through onto a pine dotted plain with a fountain in the center of it and then by going to that fountain and walking through it emerge back in the kitchen of the mansion you know where does reality begin and end and how can we at this moment satisfy ourselves that we are not in some kind of solid state matrix of some sort? How can we uh, satisfy ourselves that this is not itself a simulacrum? And the answer is you can't. We only assume it isn't because that's called Occam's razor. You all know what Occam's razor is, right? It's the idea that hypotheses should not be multiplied without necessity. The simple way of saying that is the simplest idea should always be preferred. But notice that uh, this will lead you into deep error in most human situations. If you prefer the simplest explanation for what's going on, you'll never understand what's going on. I mean, you see two people and they're falling in love. If you assume they're falling in love because they like each other, uh, you're probably missing the fact that one just inherited ten million dollars and the other is a rat. And, uh, you know, one was abused as a child and the other is able to manipulate people all over the map. So Occam's razor is fine in the formulation of physical theory, but it doesn't take us far in understanding uh, human motivation.